This is our adjustable speed potter's wheel. Powered with this foot pedal here. Okay, we went ahead and built the frame out of two by fours, and we went ahead and got the desktop that you're seeing. This portion of the desk, and then that portion of the desk. We received that or purchased that at Rebuilding Center. That top was actually only two dollars. If you can go ahead and get a piece that's already uh, finished. Uh, for a tabletop or a desktop, it'd be much easier and cheaper to go ahead and get it already finished. The Rebuilding Center here in Portland is a great place to get pieces like that. The wheel head, we use a top of a counter piece, um, and it's very thick plastic. It's an inch and a half thick, and as you can see, there's knife marks here on the top, so it was used for a countertop or a cutting board at one point. This is 12 inches directly around. And you can see on the back, what we did was we went ahead and took a 4-inch pulley and then bolted, drilled holes in this plastic and then bolted this pulley to the bottom of it. And that way we can go ahead and easily set the potter's wheel onto a shaft and then tighten it and then that would be our potter's wheel head. I'm going to go ahead and leave this off for now and show you the rest of the potter's wheel. The splash pen we went ahead and constructed out of 8-inch by 1-inch wood. It is quite a bit taller than what the potter's wheel head is, as you can see. That way, clay doesn't come out and hit you. It hits the splash pan. On this side of the splash pan, we went ahead and used this, or made this, removable. That way, we can go ahead and move it out to the side here and create quite a bit more room so we can set a bucket of water in here. Or we can go ahead and move this forward. Or we can take it away totally. On the side here, we went ahead and drilled a hole. That way the water comes out. We've got the foot pedal on this side, and I would suggest going ahead and drilling the hole on the opposite side of the foot pedal. Because where the hole is, you're going to have to set a bucket of water. And if you're setting a bucket of water on this side, you may intrude in on your foot pedal space. So I would suggest opposite side of the foot pedal. And I'm going to go ahead and take this off. We do caulk around the splash pan. You want to always remember to go ahead and put caulking around the splash pan. That way you're not leaking. And we went ahead and finished the wood with a polyurethane. Let's go ahead and show you what the potter's wheel is made of underneath. Show you the motor. The motor is an AC power, three-quarter horse, 1700 RPM motor. We purchased it for about $15 used. These are very cheap and, cheap and easy to come by. The wheel head, or the pulley here that we're using on the top of the motor is very small. That reduces the speed. The pulley here on the offset of the motor, these are a little bit larger. That also helps reducing the speed. This pulley system is made out of aluminum. This kind of aluminum, this stick right here, you can go ahead and find a long stick. These are about $5, and you can use a regular saw to cut them. And we went ahead and drilled some holes and bolted it together. That way we've got a framing for our pulley system here. This pulley system consists of two different ball bearings. Here's one, and here's another. These are pillow bearings, and these are meant to hold a shaft. This shaft is 6 inches and measures 1 quarter inch in bore. This pulley is a three pulley system. It's got three pulleys connected together. The top one is four inches, the bottom one's three inches, and the very lower one is two and a half inches. This lowest one we will not be using. Everything here is bolted onto the, the aluminum bars here. The aluminum bars are then bolted onto some hinges which allows the pulley system to move. Loosen it and tighten. The other belt, this belt right here, is connected to the other pulley system, which is then connected to the top of the wheel head. This pulley system has one pulley, which is 8 inches. It's connected to a shaft that's about 12 inches in length, and it's also one half inch bore. What's bolting it down is another pillow bearing. Let me give you a good look at the pillow bearing. On this opposite side, 
what's holding the shaft is the block bearing. This block bearing will hold the shaft straight and will give you a little bit more steadiness on the wheel head itself. Down here I'm going to go ahead and show you how the foot pedal works. On the back of your pulley system here on the swinging pulley arm we've got an eye bolt bolted into the pulley arm. It's got a piece of rope tied. Now I suggest actually using metal cable which is what we're going to go to so that way the rope won't stretch and well basically just stretch over time. This rope is connected to a self-containing pulley. These pulleys actually you can find at Home Depot or Lowe's. They've got a little pulley in here with a bar or shaft that holds them. They spin in themselves. This works perfect for this kind of a contraption with this rope. This rope then comes up here, up the line to another self-containing pulley, up to the foot pedal. The foot pedal then is pushed down and tightens up the rope, which then tightens up the belt. I'm going to go ahead and drop the potter's wheel back down. I'm going to go ahead and put the wheel head back on the potter's wheel. And I'll show you how the foot pedal is made. Foot pedal is constructed of two 2x4s two sitting next to each other. They're bolted together. And underneath is another set of 2x4s two that are bolted together. And here on the side, holding this pulley up, is another set of 2x4s. On either side, is this is one short 2x4 and this is another one. And there's a bolt that is going in from this side. And this bolt goes through this 2x4, through these two 2x4s, and out on this 2x4. And is tightened. That allows the foot pedal to go ahead and be pushed down and not come springing back up. You want a foot pedal where you can go ahead and control control it so you can control the speed on the motor. You don't want to have to constantly be pushing down on a foot pedal. You want to be able to push down and leave it down at a certain speed. And that's how the foot pedal's used. Again, here's the potter's wheel. There are a couple of other different videos that I've seen. Um, one of them I've seen is with an AC motor with a gearbox for an adjustable speed gearbox. Uh, gearboxes are pretty hard to come by. You can every now and then find them on Craigslist or on eBay um, or possibly even find them at a junkyard. Uh, the gearboxes would do a great job to go ahead and adjust the speed of the motor and if you can find those, great. The other way of doing this is going ahead and finding a DC motor, which they're a little bit harder to find than an AC motor. And the DC motors are a little more expensive, but they can be electronically controlled. Therefore, you would not have to use the pulley systems that we did. So that is our potter's wheel. Oh, and over here I'm going to show you an on-off switch. Instead of having to construct some kind of an on-off switch for the AC motor, if it does not come with an on-off switch, you can buy one of these switches out at Lowe's or Home Depot for two, three dollars. And all you do is go ahead and plug in your AC motor into this on-off switch, get an extension cord, plug it in on the other side and you'll have an on-off switch all set up. I suggest bolting one of these on-off switches to the side of your potter's wheel. That way it's easy to go ahead and turn on and off the potter's wheel. And that again is our adjustable speed potter's wheel.